This videotape will show you a proper method for turning work of two diameters in an independent four-jaw lathe chuck. This is a completed workpiece turned to two diameters. Turning work is a basic skill that you will have to learn because every job done on a lathe must be turned to a given diameter. To complete this task, you will rough and finish turn two diameters on one workpiece. Let's review the safety procedure for the engine lathe. You must wear safety glasses. Remove rings, watches, and jewelry. Roll your sleeves up to your elbows. Your clothing should fit tightly enough to prevent it from catching in the machine. Place a six or seven inch piece of faced work in an independent four jaw chuck. Leave about three and three quarter inches sticking out of the chuck. This workpiece is 1.5 inches in diameter. We want a finished diameter of one and 150 thousandths of an inch. So we will rough cut to one and 200 thousandths of an inch. This will leave 50 thousandths of an inch for the finished cut. Calculate the RPMs. The cutting foot speed for low carbon steel is 80. 4 times 80 divided by the diameter 1.5 inches equals the approximate RPM 213. Now determine the feed rate. Remember the feed rate for roughing is usually one tenth of the depth of cut. In this case our first depth of cut is one hundred thousandth of an inch. So our feed rate is 0 0.01. Start the machine with it running in the forward position. Set the RPM as close to our calculated RPM of 213 as possible. The RPM is set about one third of the distance between 200 and 248. Set the feed rate at 0 0.01. Engage the clutch. Determine the direction of the carriage. Note that the carriage must be moving toward the head stock. Change the carriage direction lever if necessary. Now shut off the carriage. Align the workpiece in the chuck using the chalk method. You are now ready to make the roughing cuts. Adjust the compound to 30 degrees off the perpendicular. Assemble the tool post. Put the left hand tool holder in the tool post. Tighten the tool post to hold the tool holder. Put the right hand roughing tool in the tool holder. Leave about 3 eighths to 1 half inch of the tool sticking out of the holder. Tighten the tool bit in the tool holder. Now loosen the tool holder. Position the tool slightly above center height. Now tighten the tool post. Use the cross feed and carriage to position the tool just on the end of the work diameter. Do not touch the tool bit to the work. Leave approximately one eighth inch between the tool bit and the work. Engage the clutch. Use the cross feed to bring the tool bit up to touch the diameter of the work. Use the carriage to back the tool off the diameter toward the tail stock end. Set the cross feed dial to zero. Set the depth of cut to one hundred thousandth of an inch. Remember, we will take one hundred thousandths of an inch off this side and one hundred thousandths of an inch off this side, removing a total of two hundred thousandths of an inch off the diameter of the workpiece. 
engage the longitudinal feed and begin the roughing cut. Rough cut the diameter to a length of three and a half inches. This process will take about two minutes. Periodically use the six inch scale to check the length of cut. After three and a half inches are cut, shut off the longitudinal feed. Back the tool bit off the diameter toward the tailstock by hand. Disengage the clutch. Measure the diameter using the one inch to two inch micrometer. Increase the depth of cut to remove enough material to reach the desired roughing diameter. Remember to leave 50 thousandths of an inch for the finishing cuts. Engage the clutch. Engage the longitudinal feed. Cut the second roughing cut. Stop the second roughing cut slightly short of the end of the first roughing cut. Complete the second roughing cut by hand. Disengage the clutch. Run the carriage by hand to bring the carriage to the end of the work. You are now ready to make the finishing cuts. Remove the roughing tool. Insert the right hand finishing tool. Tighten the tool in the tool holder. Set the tool to slightly above center height. Tighten the tool post. Position the tool over the end of the work. Recalculate the RPM for finishing. Four times the cutting foot speed of 100 divided by the diameter of work 1.5 inches equals 266 RPMs. Reset the RPM to 266. Reset a finishing feed rate of 0.0055. Engage the clutch. Touch the end of the work. Set the cross feed dial to zero. Set the cross feed dial to remove 30 thousandths of an inch off the diameter. Engage the longitudinal feed. Let the feed run for approximately one half inch of length. Disengage the longitudinal feed. Disengage the clutch. Move the tool bit back off the end of the work. Measure the diameter using the one inch to two inch micrometer. Determine the amount to be removed for the finished diameter. In this case, 
we will remove 20 thousandths of an inch to reach a finished diameter of 1 and 150 thousandths of an inch. Move the cross feed dial to remove enough metal to reach the desired finished diameter. Engage the clutch. Bring the tool bit close to the end of the work by hand. Engage the longitudinal feed. We will finish turning the workpiece to the finished diameter of 1 and 150 thousandths of an inch for a length of 3.50 inches. Shut off the longitudinal feed when you are close to the first finished length. Finish by hand. Disengage the clutch. Back the tool bit away from the diameter of the work with the cross feed. Move the tool bit away from the work using the carriage. Remove the work from the chuck. Prepare to rough cut and finish the other side of your workpiece. Align your workpiece using the dial test indicator method. Rough cut and finish the other end of your workpiece following the identical procedure that you have just seen. Your completed work of two diameters should look exactly like this. Again, your instructor will provide you with the two finished diameters he or she wants you to finish your work too.